let's get started with the session. So today I'm going to talk about how do we find the domain and range for certain real valued functions, right? So we are going to talk about domain and range, range, range for the real valued functions that you're going to come across. Uh, this entire exercise will take us two classes because there are so many real valued functions that we need to address. So what are the real valued functions whose domain and range we will be focusing on? And yes, while doing so, we'll be also learning certain inequalities because inequalities will help us to find the domain and range in some of the cases. Okay. So I just list down what are the real valued functions. By the way, the word real valued, I may not be using every time. I'm just using it to begin with, but as the course progresses, I will just use the word functions. I will not use the word real valued functions. Okay. By default, all the functions that we are going to deal with, they will be real valued in nature. Okay. Real valued uh, function means what? Can anybody tell me that? Functions whose both domain and range will be subsets of real numbers. So we'll be not talking about any such function where the function takes in or the domain of the function has some non-real quantities. Neither will be talking about any such function whose output or whose members of the range will be non-real in nature. Fine. So what are the functions that we are going to address under real valued functions? So we are going to talk about majorly three types of functions. Okay. So this is for your entire class 11th and 12th. So most of your functions will lie in these categories only. So what are they? So first we'll talk about the algebraic functions. Okay. So what are we going to cover under algebraic functions? Under algebraic functions, we are going to cover up polynomials. Okay. We are going to cover up rational functions. By the way, polynomials are types of rational functions. We will discuss about it in some time. And then we'll talk about irrational functions. So three types of functions we are going to cover up. You can say primarily two types only because polynomials are anyways covered under rational. So we are going to cover rational and irrational functions under algebraic functions. Next, we are going to take up transcendental functions. Transcendental functions. So what are transcendental functions? Non-algebraic functions are called transcendental functions. So we are also going to touch upon domain and range for certain transcendental functions. What are they? Exponential functions. You must be uh, aware of this function because if you have attended the bridge course, we had briefly talked about exponential functions also. We'll be talking about logarithmic functions. Logarithmic functions. And even though I'm listing it over here, we will not talk about trigonometric functions. Now, why we will not talk about trigonometric functions? Any guesses why we are not going to talk about domain and range of trigonometric functions? Because anyways, this is going to be covered under trigonometry part. Okay. So this part, this part I'm going to cover under trigonometry. Okay. So I don't want the same topics to be repeated over and over again. So this will be covered under trigonometry. Covered under trigonometry. Okay. So immediately after functions, we'll start with trigonometry. And then we are going to talk about some special functions. We are going to talk about some special functions. These functions you may not have come across in your study of mathematics so far. So if in 9th and 10th, we have not you know, discussed this function in our CBSC curriculum ever. So what are these new special functions that we are going to learn? So we are going to learn about modulus function. Okay. Which includes a bit of idea about modulus inequality also. So as you see, we are covering up in equations along with functions. So we don't have to do it separately. Okay. So we'll be covering up modulus function. We'll be covering, covering up greatest integer function greatest integer function. Okay. Uh, this function is also sometimes called the GIF function. GIF, the greatest integer function. Okay. Many books will also call it as floor function. 
okay it's also called floor function why it is called floor function we will discuss about it when we actually reach this function then we'll talk about the least integer function least integer function least integer function lif also called as ceiling function okay so this is also called as the ceiling function why it is called ceiling function that we will talk about when we start discussing this type of function and finally we are going to talk about fractional part function okay fractional part function and uh, last but not the least we will take up few miscellaneous cases of functions like max min functions okay so lately in uh, competitive exams they have started asking max min functions also so what are they we will discuss about it when we reach that particular part okay so primarily your entire domain and range will be covered for 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 okay so almost there are 10 functions 10 types of functions which will be addressing sir there is one more what what is that mahesh anything that you feel i have missed ah uh, okay signal function okay signal function basically i would i would try to cover in this particular part which is called piece wise functions okay so anyways we will discuss about piece wise functions and we'll talk about signal function there okay piece wise functions is it fine so primarily primarily we will be you know covering these type of functions in our discussion okay so algebraic function transcendental functions and special functions now please understand we will be covering these functions from our domain range point of view we are not going to do phd in these particular functions right so they are just the functions that you will come across and hence you should be aware of the concept of domain and range and a bit of graph okay so that you don't have a problem addressing any questions which come in association with these functions even in class 12th okay so i hope you have uh, taken a note of this shall we now start with polynomials good afternoon to everybody who has joined in i hope you all had your uh, lunch i think your classes got over by 1220 right did you get time to have your lunch no okay maybe in the break you can have it okay okay so 40 minutes of break was there so i i thought you would have your lunch during that time okay anyways let's let's get started so i'll be starting with polynomials now polynomials so guys and girls you have been already been introduced to polynomials in class 10th right so i'll be going slightly faster and uh, we will not do phd on this topic let's not you know spend too much time on this there are there is a topic called theory of equations where we will be dealing with this topic even more in detail but primarily our focus is just to find domain and range and just a bit of know how about the graph of these functions right so we will not devote too much time on this okay so what are polynomials polynomials are basically functions of this type okay these are called polynomials right and you already know that in a polynomial the variable involved whatever you want to call it x y t the variable involved or the exponent of the variable involved exponent or you call power of the variable involved is always a whole number right so this is the structure of a polynomial and the exponent or the power of the variable whatever is the variable used in the polynomial that must always be whole number it cannot be it cannot be fractions it cannot be negative integers okay so those are called polynomials so let me test your understanding of polynomials is this a polynomial let's say i call f1x x cube minus 3x square plus 2 is this a polynomial what do you think yes or no yes it's a polynomial okay what about this 1 by x square plus 2x plus 1 or 2x plus 5 is this a polynomial
is this a polynomial no it is not a polynomial because the structure of this doesn't match with this structure so both should have this should have the structure like this so in this i have not written something reciprocal of something right so this is actually a rational function but it is not a polynomial we will talk about rational function in some time not to worry okay uh, try out this one is this a polynomial x to the power 3 by 2 minus x plus 5 no it is not a polynomial because there is a fractional power sitting over there okay so i hope everybody is clear about the polynomial concept okay now this coefficient is what we call as the leading coefficient okay leading coefficient and if your degree of the polynomial is n then please note that the leading coefficient cannot be zero right so if the degree of the polynomial is n then the leading coefficient cannot be zero now this leading coefficient is a very vital element for a polynomial because first of all it is leading it, it is attached with the term of x which has got the highest power right so it takes a lot of uh, it makes a lot of difference uh, when it comes to the graph because of this leading polynomial so leading polynomial plays a very vital role in deciding which way the graph is going to be led right in in which way the graph of the polynomial is going to move okay so the leading coefficient is very very important when it comes to uh, making the graph of that polynomial we'll see how we'll see how now again let us not lose target what are we studying here we are studying domain and range right so what i will do is i will start picking up polynomials one by one and we'll start talking about its domain and range so what is the very 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 basic polynomial that comes in your mind a constant isn't it a constant polynomial is the lowest degree polynomial that you can actually come across right so a constant polynomial is a degree zero polynomial right something like f of x equal to c okay where c is some real number okay so this is the basic this is the degree zero polynomial provided c is not zero okay now this is very important if c is zero okay then we say degree is undefined okay degree is undefined so please note zero as a polynomial the degree is undefined right and if c is not equal to 0 then your degree is considered to be 0 the degree is 0 in this case okay please note this down so let's see the graph of this those who were in the bridge course you would have already come across the graph of this so i will not take your time much i'll be moving a little faster so if you see the graph of a constant polynomial please understand no matter whatever x you feed the output will always be a constant like this right so this is how a graph of a constant polynomial will look like so no matter whatever is the input let's say if you put one the input will be c right if you put a two the input will still be c if you put a three the input will still be c if you put a minus one the input will still be c okay so this graph is going to be a flat line a horizontal line even if c is one degree is zero vasudev even if c is one degree is zero because if you want to write 1, you can write 1 as 1x to the power 0, right? Yes or no? So this will be considered to be a 0 degree polynomial. But if you have a 0, then what happens? 0, if you write x to the power anything, it will be a 0. So you can have a degree of 1, 0, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1 raised to anything is uh, 1, yes, but how is it? What has it to do with the degree of the polynomial? Then one degree of one should also be undefined by that logic. No, 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 no. Get this right. Degree is the power of the variable involved in that expression. This is co acting as a coefficient. This is the variable. This so power is it, uh, the power of the variable is what we are worried about as degree, not the power of one. Sir, f of x equal to c, that one, sir. So, in that one... Yeah, so here the variable will be considered to be 0, x to the power 0. So, then it could be written as 0, x, 0 also. Then also the degree of 0 is defined. Vasudev, listen to this. 0, x, 0 can be written. 0, x, 1 also can be written. 0, x, 100 can be also written. Does it make any difference to the answer? No, sir. That's why the degree is undefined. Because no, there's so many degrees possible. 
got it sir got it right but when you are writing a one you can always only write you can only write one x to the power zero nothing else if you write one x to the power one it will become an x oh yes sir yes sir got it what the point yeah all right now uh, look at the graph and tell me what is the domain and range now i think uh, subhas sir would have already told you that for domain of the function we always see the span of the function along the x axis right so note this down note this down for domain okay you see the span of the function along the x axis that means how spread is that function along the x axis and for range of the function you see the span of the function along the y axis all right so if you look at this graph what is the span of this function along the x axis you see sir it is spreading across the entire x axis isn't it so in this case your domain will be all real numbers or you can say minus infinity to infinity both are considered to be the same thing but what will be the range what will be the range who will tell me the range range will be a singleton set right range will be a singleton set c okay so any constant polynomial the domain is all real numbers the exhaustive domain is all real numbers and the range is that value of you know the constant which is taken by the function for any input that you are putting inside okay so whatever input you put the output is always going to be c right so c becomes your a set having a c will become your range of the function okay so this is to be noted because this is what we are going to take away from this entire exercise okay please note this down next we are moving to move towards linear polynomial so i'm not going to spend too much time what did i say my main agenda is to address domain and range we are not here to do phd on these topics okay of course we'll have ample time to do all that but not right now any question so far anybody related to constant polynomial and please remember this while you are seeing the graph if you have been given a graph of a function and you want to see its domain check its span along x axis okay and if you want to see its range check the span of the function along the y axis span means everybody understand the spread the spread of the function along x and the y axis sir what if it was fy so that's a function of uh, y so it's a polynomial in y so your y will be along x axis and fy will be along y axis sir then it will be span of fy along y axis will it be changing see the domain and range my dear x and y are just name of the variables okay so whether you draw a graph of y versus fy or whether you draw x versus fx so whatever is the span of the function in this direction that will be your domain so this is your input span so whether you call that input as y or z or a t or a u it is up to you so the the spread of the function along the input axis that means what you can put inside the function those set of values are called the domain Change so the name. I'm the saying domain. that if if we take the input axis as the vertical axis, mm -hmm. then how would it be? How would it look like? See, and then whatever input axis you are defining, that itself will the set of all values sitting on that axis, they will become your domain. Even if it's the vertical axis. Even if it's the vertical axis, but the convention says that we always take the dependent variable on y axis and independent variable on x axis. So we follow the convention that if the input or the independent variable is on the x axis the span of the function along the x axis will be considered to be the domain yes sir so the idea is input whichever axis gives you the input or whichever axis is your independent variable means something which doesn't depend on anything you are just putting it without any you know uh, thought about it that axis will contain your domain and the output that comes out from that input right whichever axis you are using for it that axis elements will be called the range is it fine all right so with this we are now going to head towards linear polynomial linear polynomial functions to be more precise linear polynomial functions 
So what is linear polynomial functions? Quickly speaking about it. So a function of this type is called a linear polynomial function. Of course, A should not be zero. If A is equal to zero, then it will actually become a case of constant polynomial. So if you talk about linear polynomial, even though that constant polynomial is a line, not to get confused with a linear polynomial whose graph is also a line. Don't get confused. Constant polynomial graph is also a line. Linear polynomial function graph, that will also be a line. But let's not get confused between a constant and a linear polynomial. The nomenclature used is different for both of them. Okay. Now, I think you, are, uh, you have all done this in your uh, autonomous course that A is, called the, A is called the slope of the line. So, whichever line comes out from the graph, A is called the slope. What is slope? Anybody know slope? It's a ratio of rise to run as you move between any two points on the line. Very correct, uh, Rishabh. So, let's say this is a line. Okay. This is a line. And I take any two points on it. Yeah, that is an expression for it, tan theta. But primarily, I wanted to know whether you know this fact. Let's say if you're moving from A to B direction. Okay. So this is called the run and this is called the rise. So this is called rise and this is called the run. Okay. Please note, rise and run could be negative quantities also. For example, if you're going from B to A, rise will be negative because you're actually going down. So the ratio of these two quantities is what we call as the slope. Okay. Now, please note that in our linear polynomial, we are not going to talk about such lines whose slope is zero. Okay. Even though there are zero slope lines also, but in linear polynomials, we are not going to talk about that because A cannot be zero for us. If A is zero, it will become a case of constant polynomial function. What is B on the other hand? B on the other hand is called the y-intercept. Okay, you're already aware of it. What is y-intercept? Y-intercept is basically where the line will cut the y-axis. So let us say, I just draw my coordinate axes over here. Let's say this is my x and the y axis. Right? Now this length, this length is what we call as the y-intercept. This length is what we call as the y-intercept. Now, y-intercept is always calculated from origin. So if you're going down, so to calculate this distance, if you're going down, then that y-intercept will be negative. If you're going up, then the y-intercept will be considered to be positive, right? So here in the present case, since the line is cutting the y-axis below the origin, in this case, our y-intercept will be negative, okay? Hi, Pratik. No worries. Uh, Pratik, we were doing the concept of domain and range of polynomial functions. Okay. So I'm into my second function right now. So we have already covered a constant function over here. Okay. Don't worry. Uh, you have not missed out much. After the class, when you see the notes, you'll be able to understand everything. And of course, the recording will also be shared. Okay. Uh, y intercept the distance of the point. Uh, yeah, see, when you say this point is 0, comma b, then b automatically signifies this directed distance, my dear. Why it is called directed distance? Because b can be positive or b can be negative. Another way to understand Vasudev is it is the ordinate of the point where the line cuts the y axis. You can treat it like that also. Okay. Anyway, it is convenient to you. B is nothing but the directed distance from the origin to the point where the line cuts the y-axis. That is one way of understanding it. Another way of understanding it is, it is the ordinate or it is the y-coordinates of the point where the line meets the y-axis. Is that fine? Any questions? Okay. Directed, yeah. In this case, since you're going down, the directed distance will be negative. If you're going up, let's say my line was like this. I'll take a, another example of a line. Let's say my line was like this. Okay. In this case, your directed distance will be positive. So this will be considered to be positive, right? In this case, it will be considered to be negative. Correct. Make sense. Okay. Now quickly tell me, uh, what is the domain and range? Asha, one more thing. Many people ask me, sir, can I have a infinitely big? If your slope is infinitely big, 
please understand in that case your line will become a vertical line so let me just show you two two situations over here if your a is zero your line is going to be a horizontal line so this is when your a is zero okay so we will not be talking about this we will not be uh, you know considering this to be a linear polynomial function so this is not a linear polynomial function okay it's a constant polynomial function right okay and if your line is vertical like this okay even though it is a line but note that this is not a function itself this is not a function itself why because functions if you draw a vertical line the function will be cut only at one point isn't it so here if i draw a vertical line exactly overlapping with this line it is going to cut it at so many places right so these two cases we are not going to address okay because this is already addressed only address under constant polynomial okay and the second one is not even a function so why to why to talk about its domain and range it is a relation but it is not a function fine second one is not a function because vasudev i think uh, you would have uh, learned the vertical line test was it taught vertical line test subhras sir would have definitely mentioned about it vertical line test no yes or no anybody can you please ha ah, he did okay so vertical line test says that if in any relation you draw a vertical line okay let's say i draw a vertical line like this okay and if it cuts the graph at more than one point then it will not be a function right so it fails the vertical line test okay so it's a relation but it is not a function clear any questions any concerns any questions any concerns all good so far okay so yes now look at the graph and tell me what is the span of this graph take any one of the graph whether you take the blue line or the white line tell me what do you think will be the domain of this function and what is the range of this function right so domain will be again set of all real numbers or from minus infinity to infinity a range will also be all real numbers that is minus infinity to infinity okay so please make a note of this this is going to be your domain and range of any linear polynomial right see we'll talk about this chapter again in our straight lines concept under coordinate geometry but as of now my my target is only to talk about domain and range so we will not do lot of you can say probing on this concept till we reach the straight line so shall we move on to quadratic polynomial now quadratic polynomial any questions anybody has okay let's move on good so quadratic polynomial quadratic polynomial any polynomial of this nature is called quadratic polynomial okay now uh, here most of you would be knowing the role that this leading coefficient plays right so many of you would be already aware that a basically controls the concavity of the graph the concavity of the graph of the parabola and sorry concavity of the graph of the quadratic which is actually a parabola right most of you are already aware that a quadratic uh, polynomial graph is a parabola now how it controls the concavity of the parabola i would quickly like to show you a demonstration here let's see a demonstration on geogebra so what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to choose a slider here okay slider is basically a tool that we have on geogebra by which you can change the values of certain parameters right i begin with a very simple graph 
y equal to ax square okay and a i have not mentioned right now because a could be anything between minus 5 to 5 so this tool has automatically chosen a value as 1 right now okay but i can change it i can go all the way till 5 or i can go all the way till minus 5 now just watch what happens to the graph if i start increasing the value of a see as you see as i increase the value of a the graph is becoming more thinner and thinner right so it is basically influencing the concavity of the graph later on you realize that this is something to do with the double derivative okay as of now i'm not going to use very technical terms of calculus because you have not done calculus so later on a is basically associated with the double derivative okay and if i go backwards let's say if i start moving back to uh, let's say one again okay it's opening up and if i start going towards fractional values it is becoming fatter and fatter exactly at zero if you see the equation will become the graph will become flat just like a line and if you start going to the negative direction so you can see the function will start opening downwards okay so overall if you see this is how a will influence the the parabola's concavity do you see that okay very important now how does how does b influence the graph let's talk about b okay now b basically if you change your b it basically move makes your parabola move on a parabola okay so if this guy changes okay change of b makes the parabola or makes makes the parabola parabola move on a parabola okay i'll show you how it how it happens okay very interesting thing or maybe you would have never noted it down so what i'm going to do is i'm now going to change my slider okay i'm now going to call it as b uh this guy i'm going to erase okay and uh, i will write any parabola x square let's say x square plus bx okay and let me have a constant okay so what i have done is i have written a parabola whose a is known a is one i have chosen in this case b is something which i can change okay so i have kept a slider for b so b i want to change and uh, c i have kept it as minus 2 okay so you pick up any point on the parabola any point let's say i pick up this point right now just watch the motion of this point when i am changing my b value you see a is moving on a path which is actually parabolic okay so no matter whatever point you take up they are all dancing on a parabola so changing the value of b will make every point on the parabola dance on a parabola so it will be dancing as if it is on a parabola itself okay now a lot of things i know are uh, actually asked on this concept in je exam one one question that can be framed is what would be the equation of this blue trace itself okay so that question could be possibly asked but one thing i can tell you is that for the blue parabola which you see on your screen the a value or the leading coefficient is exactly negative of the leading coefficient of the original parabola okay some of you are saying can i show you some other point also okay let's take this point okay so watch the motion of b again when i am changing yeah again when i am changing the bc it is also moving on the same parabola right so every point is going to dance on a parabola is it clear so how does your a influence the graph how does your b influence the graph is that clear to you any questions here okay now what effect does c have to play c just makes the parabola move up or down so it is responsible for the upward slash downward movement of the parabola downward movement of the parabola okay and please mind your uh, pronunciation it's not called parabola it is called parabola okay parabola parabola is basically a word which was used coined for the path traced by an object thrown under gravity okay so a b and c i hope it is now clear okay let me show you how c is influencing it so let's uh, 
let's reopen the GeoGebra tool once again because instead of erasing so many things, is better I reopen the the entire file. Yeah. So let's have a slider. I'll call this slider as C just because my coefficient name is C. I just call it as C. And uh, let's write down a parabola x square plus x plus c. Okay. Now, if I move my c here, see how the parabola is going to move. It's just going up and down. Okay. It is not dancing. Just like it was dancing in B, like this. In this case, it is just moving up or down. Okay. So I hope the idea behind how A, B, and C are influencing the parabola graph should be clear to you now. Is it fine? Okay, now I can go, I can do this, I can do PhD on this topic, right? But that's not what we are here for. We are here for learning its domain and range. So this topic anyways will be covered under complex numbers and quadratic equations. Okay, so we'll come back again to this. So this is a very big topic for us in class 11th. Okay. How can it move up and down and in a parabola at the same time? Any point on the parabola is actually moving up and down some earth. Okay. So whatever C is there by that value of C, it is going to go up or down. Let me show you. See, if you take any point, let's say I take uh, this point. Okay. So just watch the trace of this when I'm changing my C. See, it's just moving up and down. Okay. Any point you take, you can take a point here also. Yeah. So just see the trace of this. Trace means the path which is taking. Okay. It's moving up and down only. Got it. Ah, <laughs> can you please change all at the same time and show what happens? One by one, I think is more observable. <laughs> How to make how to make it move left and right? So if if you want to make it move left and right, you have to make a change to this fellow. Okay, I, I'll show that also to you, uh, Vasudev. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, Mahesh. Mahesh. Mahesh has a question. How do I make the parabola move up and uh, sorry, right and left and right? Correct. So I'm going to change my x with x plus c. Okay. And now see. When I'm changing it, it's moving left, right. Okay. We will talk about all these things in detail, not to worry. Yeah. When I'm taking theory of equations, we will go more into de detail of that. See what will happen if you change A, B and C, the parabola will become thin fat, will move also will move up and down. So it will be a chaotic movement. What do you want? What would you like to know about it? Sir, can a parabola open downwards? Yes, my dear. If I change my uh, quadratic equation coefficient to negative, it will it will open downwards, which I think already I discussed it, right? If I put a minus sign here, the parabola will open downwards. So can't it be analyzed like one at a time? Didn't I do that already? Didn't I show you what will happen when A changes? Didn't I tell you what will happen when B changes? And didn't I also tell you what happens when C changes? So why you want to make everything change at a time? Okay. So if you're so much of interest in uh, knowing it, I will do it for you. Okay. So Vasudev has a very, very special request. He is asking me to change everything. Okay. So Vasudev, let's try it out. It will be a full khichdi, but still, if you want to see it, let's do it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set up, I'm going to set up three sliders here, A, B, and C. Okay. So slider A, uh, let's also set slider B. Okay. And also let's uh, set slider C. Yeah. And now I'm going to write a quadratic Y is equal to AX square plus BX plus C. Okay. Now I will put everything on. See, it's going up also, it's expanding, contracting also, it is moving also. So, kya pata chal rahe se? nothing you can gaze out, right? So, you're just making everything change. 
Is it fine? Any questions here? Just you wanted to see the animation effect, maybe. Okay. All right. So let's stop this, and we'll move on to something related to our domain and range. Yeah. So guys, we have already discussed here, guys and girls, we have already discussed here that if a is greater than zero, your graph of the quadratic parabola is going to open upwards, right? So the graph is going to look like this. Okay, I'm just drawing a rough graph, right? And if a is negative, if a is negative, your quadratic equation graph is going to open downwards. Correct. Now, I'm sure all of you know what is this point called? This point or this point. What is it called? It's called a vertex. Right. This is called the vertex of the parabola. Later on, we learn that vertex is basically a point or point of intersection of the axis of the parabola with the parabola. This is called the axis of the parabola. What is the axis of a parabola? A line which cuts the parabola into two symmetrical halves. That is called the axis of the parabola. So this is what we call as axis. Okay, axis. Now, what is the coordinate of the vertex of the parabola? Coordinate of the vertex of a parabola. This coordinate is given by minus b by two a comma minus d by four a. Where what is d? D is the discriminant. I hope you are all have heard this term discriminant. What is discriminant? B square minus 4ac. Why it is called discriminant? Why it is called discriminant? Because it discriminates between the nature of the roots. Correct. Now, please note that the vertex coordinate plays a very vital role in deciding the domain and range of the graph. In fact, very vital role in deciding the range of the quadratic polynomial. Okay, how we will see in some time. Achha, many people ask me, sir, even if the parabola opens upwards or downwards, does the vertex coordinate remain the same? Yes, my dear. The vertex coordinate always remains minus b by 2a comma minus d by 4a for an upward or downward opening parabola. Mind you, the parabolas can also open left or right, but those will not be considered as functions. So we'll be not talking about those parabolas unless until we are into conic sections chapter. Okay. Now. Look at the graph and tell me whether A is positive or whether A is negative. What should be the domain of the function? What should be the domain of the function? <clears throat> All real numbers, right? All real numbers because the graph is spreading in both directions indefinitely, right? So these arms are not going to stop. So these are going to go to plus infinity on the right side and minus infinity on the left side. So if you look at the span of the function, the span of the function will be the entire real number line along the x-axis, right? What about the range? What about the range? What about the range? Now, range will depend upon your A value. If A is positive, if A is positive, then what will be your range? Now, look at this left graph. If yes, yes, correct, uh, Rishabh and Mahesh. If you're, no, sorry, uh, not Rishabh, Mahesh, yes. If A is positive, the graph will start from this vertex point, okay, and go all the way up to plus infinity, isn't it? So, along the y axis, the graph is spreading from minus d by 4a to plus infinity, correct? Now, need, no, need not write plus. If you just write infinity, it is considered to be plus infinity. And if your a is negative, now look at this second graph. So you will start from this position and go all the way down to minus infinity, right? So in this case, our range will become from minus infinity open to minus d by 4a closed. Okay, so kindly make a note of this because, you know, if you get a direct question on finding the domain and range of quadratic function, then you can use this formula. Is it fine? Any questions?
ओके कैन वी हैव अ स्मॉल क्वेश्चन जस्ट अ स्मॉल क्वेश्चन फॉर दिस पॉलिनोमियल फंक्शन ओके फाइंड नंबर वन द डोमेन ऑफ द फंक्शन द डोमेन ऑफ द फंक्शन एंड रेंज ऑफ द फंक्शन quickly give me a response on the chat box domain is easy domain you don't have to worry about what's the domain answer all real numbers right all real numbers okay so i'm more worried about the range i'm more worried about the range so give me a response for the range correct sanjana correct uh uh acha mahesh uh, just a quick advice from my side to everybody if you're mentioning any interval okay let's any interval you are mentioning a to b a should always be lesser than b so the least value should always be on the left side more value should be on the right side okay so never say something somebody i think uh, wrote minus root 17 by 2 to minus infinity this is a this is a wrong way to write it because minus infinity is smaller so that should be on the left side okay all right so let's discuss it out let's discuss it out so in this case since your a is negative since your a that is a leading coefficient is negative the graph is going to be opening downwards right so your range is going to be minus infinity to minus d by 4a right so your answer will be minus infinity to minus d now minus d is 4ac minus b square or let's calculate d separately so d is b square minus 4ac so b square is 9 minus 4ac is 8 correct no so d is 17 so this is going to be minus 17 by minus 8 or you can write it in a more resolve form 17 by 8 okay so this is going to be your answer for the range most of you got it correct well done most of you got you got this correct is it fine all right so as i told you we are not going to do phd on quadratic right this anyways is a topic for you in uh, not only complex number and quadratic equation chapter but it's also a chapter in the conic section so we'll get ample time to do lot of you know uh uh going into much depth in this particular concept well we when we reach those topics so immediately my main focus would be to be addressing the domain and range so i'll move on now to cubic polynomials so if you have any questions related to domain and range per se of quadratic polynomials please feel free to ask questions please feel free to ask you know stop me and uh, you know ask your doubts okay if no doubt we can move on all right so we'll now move on to cubic polynomials now again my purpose is not to do phd on this topic okay so i'll just talk about domain and range now how does a cubic polynomial normally look like a cubic polynomial basically equation is a degree 3 polynomial equation something of this nature okay and again this a plays a very vital role in the graph of the cubic polynomial so if a is positive if a is positive roughly speaking roughly speaking the graph of a cubic polynomial looks like this i mean this is a rough estimation of the graph okay please don't take it as if it is always going to cut the x axis at three points no not necessarily many a times it will just look like this also it can be like this also okay sometimes i have seen the graph will be like this also okay so it is just a rough estimate that i am drawing on your screen right now rough means a very generic view it's like you know i'm just trying to show you a lion right now if you go to different parts of the world lions will be different in shapes and sizes right so for example if you go to the savannas the lions will be the big and strong and our indian lions are like like this <laughs> so 
my purpose is not to exactly represent every lion but to show how a lion typically looks like isn't it so in the same way i'm trying to express how a cubic polynomial actually typically looks like so what is more important here is to see where are the end branches of this polynomial so if a is positive your graph will always end towards plus infinity if your x becomes very very large and the graph will always end towards minus infinity if your x is negatively very very large this is very important because from this we will get an idea about its domain and range okay so again note this down we are going to talk more about it under theory of equations similarly if your a is positive uh, negative then your graph will roughly roughly again i am not drawing a very accurate graph for all situations your graph will actually look like this in other words your graph will be going towards minus infinity if your x is going towards plus infinity and your graph will be going towards plus infinity if your x is going towards minus infinity okay so these are the two points two arms that is worth noting down because again we will come to know about its domain and range from that now many people ask me sir why do you think it's going to go up to plus infinity when x is very large and minus infinity when x is very negatively very large see very simple if you keep this as positive okay and please note this term will be the dominating term out of these four terms because here the x is having the largest power on it so if you go if your x is becoming very very large then this whole thing will be positive so your graph will go towards plus infinity but if your x is going towards a very very negatively large value this whole thing will become negative negative very very large so your graph will go towards negative infinity and opposite is going to happen when your a has the negative sign that is the reason why the graph looks like this okay yes vihan i i'll show you on the on the geogebra also see uh let's let's have a quick demonstration of these graphs so i'm just uh, opening a graph yeah so let me draw a cubic polynomial graph with a positive coefficient so y is equal to 2x cube 2x cube okay minus acha now if i just stop at 2x cube if you see don't worry about the between part what is happening just see the end arms end arms will always be towards plus infinity as you go towards the right side so this will go to plus infinity as you go towards plus infinity on this side and it will always go to minus infinity if you go to minus infinity on this side okay so even if i write just 2x cube it is going to show you the same trend but let me now write few more terms to this let's say i add a negative uh, negative x square maybe okay negative 3x square okay plus 4x okay minus 5 maybe or let's write yeah so again whatever you write see many people they are worried about sir you have shown some ups and downs here in the graph what are these ups and downs now these ups and downs we don't have to worry about right now okay by the way this is called the local maxima this is called the local minima so i am not worried about local maxima local minima right now because the, those are subject matter of calculus and those are anyways not going to decide our domain and range so our main focus is domain and range only right so what i want you to see is that where are the end arms going where are the end arms going this is more important to me okay similarly if i have a negative coefficient of x cube so if i just make it negative 2 then see what happens okay so as you can see here the graph has now shown this kind of a nature the one which i have shown on this side do you see that okay so what is more important is where are these end arms going where are these end arms of the graph going that is more important to me right now clear okay so these are the local maxima and local minima and they require calculus so i don't want to comment on them right now so they need calculus to be addressed 
and calculus is something which we have not yet started with but we'll be starting very soon towards the end of the year so looking at these two graphs let us come back to our main agenda what is the domain what is the domain here and what is the range here what is the domain and what is the range here look at the span of the function along x axis domain is all real numbers right range is also all real numbers because it is going to extend in both direction along x axis and both directions along the y axis okay uh yes anirudh it is going to be shared but uh, don't worry about missing whatever you have missed so far take a particular polynomial as a new concept okay so don't worry don't think like okay since i missed the first part of the class i will not be able to understand anything nothing like that okay so just start every polynomial is a fresh function for us okay so we'll be talking about domain and range of those polynomials freshly it has nothing to do with the previous polynomial fine so pay attention uh from here also okay you have not missed much thing is it fine again may our main focus was domain and range that we have already done so we will now move on to the next polynomial so you must be wondering sir how many polynomials are you going to cover because there are infinitely many polynomials existing see i'll only talk about bi quadratic and after that we will summarize okay after that we will summarize so let's move on to bi quadratic polynomial bi quadratic polynomial bi quadratic polynomial okay how does a bi quadratic polynomial look like so it's a fourth degree polynomial equation so something like this is a bi quadratic polynomial okay now again this a has a very vital role to play in deciding the graph so if a is positive a bi quadratic polynomial graph will roughly roughly again mind you my dear i'm using the word roughly not exactly okay every time uh it, it all depends on a b c d e and e right but what i'm showing you every is a generic picture of a bi quadratic graph so it will look like this okay i'm just drawing a, a rough version so what is important for us is these two brand arms of the graph we are not going to worry about these local maximas and local minimas over here okay that is a subject matter of calculus what i am more interested in is the two ends of these graphs okay because that is going to help us know its domain and range and if a is negative the graph will show a reverse direction trend so it will be somewhat like this okay i'm just drawing roughly i'm just drawing roughly okay so it is going to go down so both the arms are going to go towards negative infinity so in this case when your a is positive as you increase the value of x to plus infinity this graph will go to plus infinity and if you also decrease the value to minus infinity it will still go to plus infinity okay and when your a is negative the other way round trend will be seen if you increase it to plus infinity the graph is going to go down to minus infinity and this also if you increase to minus infinity the graph is going down to minus infinity okay and the reason is the same the reason is the same because this is the dominating term and note that even for plus or minus this is always going to be positive so if this is positive everything will open upwards and if this is negative everything will open downwards okay so that is how your graph of a bi quadratic is going to look like now who will tell me the domain of this function quickly what is the span of the function along x axis all real numbers right and what is the range of the function now please understand here for range of this function we actually need calculus okay or calculus is needed let me call it as calculus calculus is required or needed okay why calculus is needed because see if you talk about this case here we will be basically starting from this position whatever is this position and we'll going all the way up to plus infinity right but how do i know this position how do i know this position so this position will require you to use calculus now that is not a vertex 
this is not a vertex that you use your vertex formula of a quadratic and get the y coordinate of this point no to know the y coordinate of this point you would have to apply differentiation correct yes you have to differentiate it so since we have sir, not done yes mahesh sir um, can't be like uh, for like for quadratic we found uh, minus b by 2a that we uh, used tag plus and found out and it's generalized so here also can't be generalized like that you say you are trying to say that this is minus b by 2a or something like that no we no, can't no, i'm saying that again take a general uh, you know by quadratic polynomial the differentiate define the minima and just use it as a general formula my dear mahesh you know differentiation is there anybody else other than mahesh and rishabh who knows how to differentiate so no sir even for minus b by 2a we didn't know differentiation just we mark the formula minus b by 2a no minus b by 2a doesn't come from differentiation it comes from the act of completing the square it can also come from differentiation but that is not the only way to get it but in a bi quadratic without differentiation you cannot find the coordinates yes sir got the point what i'm trying to say yes sir in quadratic differentiation was not necessary to get that coordinate of the vertex but in bi quadratic if you want to know this minima location you have to differentiate it put to zero solve that cubic equation then do a double derivative test all those things will come into picture but other than three of you maybe prateek rishab and whatever uh, whoever uh, many people don't know differentiation so sir, everyone of, knows differentiation in this class we already did in physics you already did in physics it's like base everybody physics. everybody knows yes sir we did it in physics okay so if that is the case then of course if a question comes you apply differentiation and get your result okay many sir, yes, we didn't do maximum and minima in physics ha huh? we didn't do maximum and minima in physics yes that's what many of you are saying i don't know in full depth right maybe you have just skimmed through the topic okay so we will discuss it not to worry so meanwhile when the concept of uh, calculus is not been covered we will not take up questions on range for bi quadratic in fact for the subsequent polynomials uh, we will talk about it in some time we will not be talking about the domain and range so even in this case you don't know the coordinate of this point right so this requires calculus so without that i cannot comment about its range because i would need calculus for it okay so we'll wait for the right time to come we'll wait for the right time to come to take up the range concept of polynomials if you take many bi quadratics plot them you will get a general pattern with which you can get the no no no, <laughs> no that doesn't work that doesn't work vasudev okay every you know bi quadratics can go anywhere from anywhere to anywhere right there is no range there is no pattern in the range right it all depends upon your a b c d and e values okay so uh, this is not something which you can gauge by looking at the pattern okay all right so as i told you we will not go uh, into too much of depth of polynomials so we'll try to summarize here right so we'll try to take up a summary of domain and range of polynomials domain and range of polynomials okay so first thing that you would have all noticed that no matter whatever is the polynomial whether it is a constant linear quadratic cubic bi quadratic its domain will always be all real numbers okay so this is to be noted down any polynomial is given to you no matter whatever is the degree okay degree 0 to degree infinity whatever its range will always be all real numbers that means a polynomial graph will always span across the entire x axis okay now what about range for range you basically have to look at the degree of the polynomial so if it is an odd degree polynomial so let's say i divide the polynomial into two parts one is an odd degree polynomial okay and other is an even degree polynomial even degree polynomial so for any odd degree polynomial your range will always be all real numbers right so whether it is degree 1 degree 3 degree 5 degree 7 degree 9 degree 11 whatever odd degree polynomials are there 
its range will always be all real numbers which is from minus infinity to infinity okay for even degree polynomial if you have a degree zero okay if the degree is zero then you can say the range is a singleton set okay your range is going to be a singleton set if it is degree 2 if it is degree 2 here also you can predict that depends upon a value if a is greater than 0 then it is from minus d by 4a up till infinity and if a is if a is less than 0 then its range is given from minus infinity to minus d by 4a correct and for any other higher even degrees so let me write it like this so higher even degrees you would require calculus is needed so we cannot as of now comment but of course when we do calculus we will talk about it okay so calculus is needed okay so does it mean that we will not get any question related to the range of uh, higher even degree polynomials as of now no but eventually yes because anyways you would have done calculus by the time you are writing your competitive exams okay so this is a quick summary of the domain and range of polynomials any questions anybody No, I will not do that derivation right now, Asudev, because if I start telling you everything about the quadratic, this chapter is going to take another three classes to complete. I told you, you know, the quadratic equation vertex, I will derive when we do quadratic equation. Our main agenda is domain range. Let's not talk anything beyond it, because that will just lead us to, you know, go deeper and deeper and deeper into the concept. But it comes very simply by completing the square. Okay. Sir. So Yes. Sir, in, uh, in the center module, the functions they just one whole thing, the 11th and 12th combined. Here, how, how, are you going to do separately or just in one book? Quick? Okay. Now, a very important uh, thing that I would like to share with you. Functions are there in class 11 and 12 both. Okay. And in your module, they have combined it. Because for the module, it doesn't make any difference whether it is taken by 11th grade or a 12th grade. Okay, so while you are doing the module, you would realize that there are many topics that you would not be studying in class 11th, like inverse of a function, composition of a function, uh, even odd functions, periodic functions, type of functions like one one, many one, into, onto. Those are all class 12th level topics, right? So what I would request here is first you do your basics from R D Sharma. Okay, do your basics from RD Sharma, do your basics from NCRT exemplar. As the time progresses, get see, get hold of domain and range part of it. Wherever a domain range question is seen, other than inverse trigonometry and also trigonometry part, don't be you know too much involved. But if you have a rational function, irrational function, if you get exponential function, logarithmic function, or if you have modulus function or signum function, GIA function, try to address, try to solve questions based on domain and range. Other part you can leave for class 12th. When you reach class 12th, you will automatically come to know about many other concepts. Okay. Function is a huge chapter. It is not going to be covered in class 11th. It's going to be also covered in class 12th. Okay. Is that, does, this, does that answer your question, uh, Mahesh? Yes, sir. Uh, what type of uh, statement is that Adi Sharma is more important than center modules for now? There's nothing called important. Some topics, no, no, no. Some topics you will see, uh, you would realize that you should do Adi Sharma before doing center module. And some topic you will feel that if you do center modules, everything is else, else is covered. Okay. So, so there could, is you also no tell, could you also tell how to solve Adi Sharma? Because there's so many questions and solving everything would be like, I don't think it would be efficient enough. See, always solve questions of one type. And if let's say the second type question are a repetitive type, you can just skip it. Don't solve everything. Time is not there to solve everything. You, you must be thinking it's a year long program. No, this, this are so many chapters in the whole year that you will hardly get more than four days per chapter. Okay. So you have to cover so many chapters in the coming year that you can't sit and solve each and every question. 
So for example, if you see first question you solved, second, third look same, then skip it. I mean, of course, don't skip it under the assumption that you will be solving it. If you feel that, no, I know how to solve it, then don't attempt it. Okay. Because time is not there to do everything. All right. So with this, we are moving on to rational functions. Rational functions. So what is a rational function? First of all, a rational function is basically a function which is expressed as a polynomial divided by another polynomial. So these two are polynomials at the end of the day. Okay. So many people ask me, sir, even then a polynomial becomes a rational function. Yes. Yes. A polynomial is also a rational function because a polynomial can always be written as that polynomial divided by one. Isn't it? So that also is a rational function, right? So any function where there's a polynomial divided by another polynomial that becomes a rational function. Examples could be something like, you know, a constant divided by let's say X plus two, that's a rational function. Okay. Let's say X plus one divided by three X minus seven. It's a rational function. So let's say you have X squared divided by X cubed plus two rational function. Okay. So there can be so many such examples cited for rational functions. Now, what are we going to learn here? We are going to learn here two things, domain and range, domain and range. Okay. So domain, I will first quickly tell you, how do we find the domain of any rational function? Anybody is aware of it? So domain of any rational function. How do you find out? How do you find domain of any rational function? Correct. So it is all real numbers except those values of X, which makes the denominator become zero. Right. The denominator should not be zero. So it can take any real number as an input, but you should not put anything which is making the denominator become zero. Getting the point. So note down this formula because this formula is going to be helpful in the entire discussion of rational functions. So whether you talk about linear by quadratic or a constant by linear, whatever type of rational function you generate, this formula for domain is going to be valid. Is it fine? Okay. Now what about range? What about range? So range is something which we will basically look from case to case. Okay. So we will not give you a direct formula for range as, as we have given, as I have given you a direct formula for domain range is dependent on case to case. Okay. So we'll take few cases and then we'll try to see how do we actually find the range. Okay. So domain is very easy for domain. There is a ready-made formula. Note this down and for range, it will depend from case to case. Okay. Now range is slightly difficult. Range is not as simple as finding the domain. Many people do mistakes in finding the range most of the time. All right. So what are the cases? What are the cases we are going to see? So what I have done, I have basically uh, classified this uh, rational function under three cases. Okay. Or three types of questions. So let's talk with type one question. Okay. So under type one question, I'll be giving you a rational function, which has got a constant polynomial on the top divided by a linear polynomial. Okay. So I'm taking a case where my rational function has a constant polynomial on the top and a linear polynomial in the denominator. Okay. Let's take an example of it. Uh, as an example, let's say I have taken a polynomial uh, uh, rational, fu rational function as two divided by three X minus five. Okay. As you can see, this is constant like this one, and this is linear like this one. Okay. Now let's find domain first. In fact, you tell me what's the domain. I have already given you the formula all real numbers minus those X, which will make the denominator become zero. Correct. Pratik, Vasudev, Sanjana. Very good. 
very good so domain is all real numbers except those values of x for which the denominator becomes a zero and that value is happen that value happens to be 5 by 3 so please write it like this so r minus 5 by 3 is going to be your domain okay what about range what about range now for range let us look into something very important what is range range is the value of f of x for those x which belong to this interval isn't it so in short what is range range is your output when you feed the inputs to the function so these are all your inputs correct right and this is your output this is your output right so what is your what are your outputs when you feed these inputs to the function so whenever you are trying to find out the range of any function always first figure out the inputs are you getting my point so please note this down this is something which many people overlook never ever find the range without finding the domain okay even if the question says just to find out the range please always figure out the domain first okay before finding the range because without the input there is no existence of the output so till you know what is the input how can you comment on the output okay so it's a very very important practice many people say sir is it a good practice or is it an important practice i say it's an important practice it's a very important practice to figure out the domain first before finding the range got it okay so now for the sake of brevity i will start calling f of x as y okay so i'm trying to find out in what interval will y lie if your x lies in this interval so if your x lies in this interval what is the interval in which your y will lie very good pratik and rishav you have actually got the answer so for finding the range what are the steps involved listen to the steps first the first step is you make x the subject of the formula right now why do we do that i'll tell you the reason behind it so first i will try to make x the subject of the formula so if i make x the subject of the formula what do i get so from this expression uh, let's take it to the other side send the 5y to the other side and divide by 3y okay so basically what i have done i have made x the subject of the formula now why have i done that it is because i know that this x belongs to all real numbers minus 5 by 3 right that means this guy will also belong to the same interval and from there i will get an idea about the interval in which y can lie correct so what i am using the fact i am using the domain of the function right to write the x value like this and now i am claiming that this is all real numbers except 5 by 3 correct right so this can take any real number this whole thing can take any real number except 5 by 3 okay now how do i get the value of y from this now listen to this very very carefully so first of all if your if your expression here is always real what is the value that y cannot take if you want this to be real first of all It is zero. real, right? Yeah. What is the value which y cannot take? Zero, mm -hmm. right? So the first thing that I am going to write is y cannot take a value of zero because if it takes a zero value, this entire expression becomes undefined, right? And that's not how that's not that's not what I am expecting the function to give, right? So I don't want I don't want the entire expression here to become undefined. So because it is x value, x is all real. It is it is not undefined. Okay. now i know i also don't want this expression to become equal to this correct i also don't want my expression to become equal to this so what i'm going to do is i am going to actually try to make this equal to this so that i see i can see what value of y i need to remove are you able to understand what i'm trying to do see this whole thing cannot be 5 by 3 isn't it so i am equating it to 5 by 3 to check what value of y is not permitted understood 
just type a yes if you have understood what i'm trying to say since this cannot this cannot take a value of this i'm trying to see that if i equate it to 5 by 3 what value comes out from there that value of y i will also exclude so zero anyways i have excluded i will also exclude that y value which will come out when i solve this equation but let us see what happens when we try to solve this equation so first of all 3 3 gets cancelled take the y to the other side and you'll end up getting a shocking x statement 2 is equal to 0 right which is not possible right so what does this try to say is that this anyways cannot take 5 by 3 so this expression which i have circled in white that anyways cannot be 5 by cannot be 5 by 3 so from here i do not get anything to exclude correct so here i cannot exclude anything because this expression no matter whatever value of y you take can never become a 5 by 3 so the only value which i need to exclude is 0 so what happens to my range a range becomes all real numbers excluding 0 okay so this is your answer for the range and this is your answer for the domain is it fine any question any concerns related to domain and range take your time understand ask your questions get it straight because later on things are going to become more complicated okay acha would you like to try one more example if you have understood this let's do a more question one more question okay let's take another question question is you have a function uh, 7 divided by uh, 4 minus 3x okay question is find the domain of the function and find the range of the function let's do it give me a response on the chat box so the approach i have already discussed with you just apply that approach and tell me the domain and the range quickly quickly correct pratik acha there are two pratiks your your pratik ranganath right and when i see your uh, group i see one more pratik not in the class right now but pratik tejasvi so who is pratik ranganath pratik ranganath is also in rajaji nagar or some different school there is no pratik ranganath okay then he may be from a different school range okay same answer for the range okay all right so let's discuss quickly we don't have much time here domain as i already discussed with you it is going to be all real numbers except those values which make 4 minus 3x become 0 correct no so i don't want the denominator to become 0 so this will give me 4 by 3 so domain is all real numbers except 4 by 3 clear okay what about range range the process is same we call it as y y equal to 7 minus 4 by 3 4 minus 3x then what do we try to do we may, we try to make x the subject of the formula correct so when you try to make x the subject of the formula this is what you are going to see 4y minus 7 is 3xy so x is going to be 4y minus 7 by 3y correct now you want this to be all real numbers except 4 by 3 So first of all, if you want it to be all real numbers, y cannot be zero. 
okay and at the same time y cannot take such a value for which this will become 4 by 3 so first what i'll do i'll try to equate it to 4 by 3 and try to see any value comes out from there no i am disappointed no value comes out from there so this is the only so this is not possible so this is the only value that you need to exclude so your range in this case is going to be all real numbers except 0 okay now a question would appear in somebody's mind that sir can we generalize this can we generalize this so if i have a function of this type a by bx plus c is there any direct formula to get its domain and range yes domain will be straight away all real values except 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 tell me tell me on the chat box except what should i write minus c by b right and range and range will always be all real numbers except zero so you can actually save your time if at all a question like this comes to you to solve okay but i would request not to learn this as a formula don't try to make unnecessary formulas which you will not be able to remember for long okay so keep this in mind in case you want to save your time but don't try to remember this as a formula by virtue of practice if you happen to remember it then well and good that's a bonus for you but don't sit and mug this up is it fine any questions all right so we'll now move on to we will now move on to type 2 questions okay so in type 2 questions we are going to talk about linear by linear so linear polynomial by another linear polynomial okay let's take an example uh let's say i have a function which is something like this um 3x plus 4 upon 2x minus 3 okay i want to find out the domain and i want to find the range of this function now as i already told you domain approach is plain and simple right domain there is no brainer actually so domain formula is all real numbers except those x values for which your denominator becomes zero and your denominator will become 0 at 3 by 2 so just remove that value from the domain clear no no doubt about domain anybody okay a range also the process is more or less the same so what i'll do i'll call this as a y okay and i will try to make x the subject of the formula so let's let's multiply the denominator to the left side okay so i'm trying to make x the subject of the formula so uh, let me bring the 3x to the left and let me bring the 3y to the right okay so take x common from here it will be 2y minus 3 okay and x will become 3y plus 4 upon 2y minus 3 uh, so far so good anybody having any problem in the simplification part a right ratio i'll come to that i'll come to that your your answer is absolutely right okay but let us go slowly because many of the students they would like to keep it slow and steady any any problem so far now this should belong to the domain of the function and what's the domain of the function r minus 3 by 2 correct anything i have missed on please let me know yeah so this should be r minus 3 by 2 now please note if you want this to be real number if you want this guy to be real number what is the first thing that you should you know bring into your notice what value y cannot take can this guy be zero ever you'll say no sir that cannot be zero so the first thing that you need to disallow disallow Y to take is three by two, so y cannot be three by two, because if y is three by two, this denominator will become a zero, right? Right? Please don't don't exclude zero. Zero can be taken by y, but y cannot take such a value for which this term two y minus three becomes zero. Getting my point? 
and at the same time y cannot take such a value for which 3y plus 4 by 2y minus 3 becomes a 3 by 2 so what i'll do i'll purposely assign it 3 by 2 and see is there any y value coming up so that i can exclude that y value so let's check so if i cross multiply this becomes 6y plus 8 equal to 6y minus 9 oh my god this is not possible because it gives me 8 equal to minus 9 so the only value of y which you need to exclude is 3 by 2 so rishav your answer is absolutely absolutely right so your range will be all real numbers except 3 by 2 is that fine any questions so domain and range happen to be the same here isn't it domain and range happen to be actually the same coincidentally coincidentally understood any questions any questions here shall we move on would you like to take one more question okay let's take another question so question is if your function is 2x minus 7 upon uh, 4 minus 5x okay find number 1 the domain of the function and find number 2 the range of the function okay okay very good so i think domain people are taking no time to answer this yes quick time to answer the domain and after this problem i'll tell you a quick way to find range also <laughs> but again uh, with i'm not i'm not basically trying to give you formulas that's that has never been my way of teaching so i i don't believe in giving formulas because if you just learn formula and go things can change at in no time in the you know examination hall and you will be you know clueless how to proceed okay so let us understand the concept from the very core of it so from very depth of it so that no matter whatever situation comes you will come out you know solving the problem correctly very good uh, rishab rishab do you see a pattern in the range by the way just a question if if you can then do let me know uh no pratik range is slightly long wrong just check yeah yeah take your time take your time take a minute take a minute or two right right mahesh mahesh has figured out a pattern well done okay let's discuss this out well this this discuss this out uh, so domain as i already discussed it will be all real numbers except those x values which will make your denominator become zero right so your denominator will become zero when x becomes 4 by 5 correct rishab that is the pattern very good and what about range what about range for range as i already told you the approach okay equated to correct sanjana okay ha ah, sadeep correct right so let's let's discuss it so now here i'll try to make x the subject of the formula so let's take the denominator to the right side okay let's bring uh, x terms to one side okay so x will become 4y plus 7 divided by 2 plus 5y okay now this has to be your domain because this is actually your x value right so first of all if you want this to be real if you want this to be real you don't want your denominator to become zero right so this thing should never be zero 
that means y can never be 2 by 5 minus 2 by 5 okay so this is number one second thing that you have to look into is you don't want this expression to ever take up value of ever take up value of or let's say if i put it as a value of 4 4 by 5 see what will happen if i put it as a value of 4 by 5 then 20y plus 35 will be equal to 20y plus 8 that means 25 will become equal to 8 which is anyways not possible so this guy can never become 4 by 5 so this is the only condition that you need to honor okay so your range is going to be all real numbers except minus 2 by 5 this is your answer for the range now for those who are ah, very very correct sanjana so for those whom i asked what is the pattern for getting the range it is just the coefficient of x on the numerator divided by coefficient of x on the denominator that value has to be excluded so r minus 2 divided by minus 5 or for that matter r minus minus 2 by 5 becomes your becomes your range okay again so it's a formula which you can actually use if you want to save your time but don't wrongly apply one formula to the other okay so in general or let's generalize it if you have a function of this type ax plus b by cx plus d then your domain always becomes all real numbers except minus d by c and a range will become all real numbers except a by c okay so in case you want to remember it as a formula you may use it but don't overload your memory if if you are a person who cannot memorize then don't try doing using uh, you know memory to solve it you will end up losing those you know sure shot four marks which you could have anyways got by solving it in a proper way okay is this fine any questions any concerns okay so before moving on to type 3 now time to take up some inequalities because without inequalities we will not be able to proceed with the further types of rational functions in fact even after rational functions where we are going to start with irrational functions knowing certain inequalities becomes very very important so i will take a pause here from our domain and range of rational function and in between I will introduce a prerequisite, which is your inequalities, which is your inequalities. Okay. So how to solve certain inequalities? So uh, we will start with, we will start with a very important mechanism or a scheme that we use to solve rational function inequalities. Okay. And that, that method is called the wavy curve sign scheme. Okay, some books will also call it as method of intervals. Okay, so what is this wavy curve sign scheme? Is it a scheme given by Modi government? <laughs> not really. It's not a scheme of Modi government. It's a scheme where we are going to learn how to. So this method will be helpful. So this is the method to solve inequalities inequalities or you can say in equations in equations of the below type okay so please listen to the structure of this inequation so i'm just writing a very you know ugly looking expression so it basically helps you to solve in equations of this nature okay I'm just writing a very generic structure of it. Don't get scared by the structure. Beta 2 to the power L2, da 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 da. Till let's say beta m to the power L. Okay. So either greater than or less than or greater than equal to or less than equal to 0. Okay. 0 should be on this side. Fine. So we are going to learn how to solve inequalities of this nature. This is basically called a rational function inequality. So this is actually a rational function inequality. Okay. Or rational function in equation. Why it is called a rational function in equation? Because if you see this, this term, this is actually a 
rational function right and inequality because you are learning how to solve inequalities okay now many people ask me this question sir is it necessary for the zero to be there on the right side yes so this method which i am going to discuss with you that can only be applied if you have a zero on the right side so on the left hand side you should have any rational function which can include polynomials also and this could be any of these four inequalities so either you can have these pure inequalities or these impure inequalities but on the right hand side we must definitely have a zero we must definitely have a zero then only this method actually makes sense or this method only will work then okay now while explaining you the method i will also tell you why this method actually works uh i didn't get that uh, sir what if you transfer non zero to other side and take lcm oh, yeah 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 of course if you had a non zero number then you can you know send it to the other side okay and produce a zero okay but right now i have basically taken an expression where you have done all that all those activities and you have attained this stage okay so if there was a non zero term you please take it to one side keep zero on the right side so right now the expression that you see is after doing that step right okay so the process starts from here that is what i basically i'm trying to tell you so what is the process here listen to this carefully listen to this carefully because many a times uh, uh, you don't get a clear picture of it in school okay so the first thing that you are going to do here is you are going to make a number line okay acha by the way let's take an example to understand this rather than me writing this alpha 1 alpha 2 da 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 those ugly numbers let's take an example let's take an example uh, i'll put an example here so let's say i want to solve this inequality x minus 1 to the power 2 x minus uh, 3 to the power of 5 x plus 1 to the power of let's say uh 1 divided by let's say x to the power of uh, 6 x minus 2 to the power of 5 let's take a different number 5 i have already taken let's take 3 yeah and x plus 2 to the power of let's say 1 again okay and let me choose an inequality let's say greater than equal to 0 okay so what i have done i have taken one example question okay but don't worry from this example you should be able to get the process very very easily okay just pay attention don't write anything as of now put your pens down and just lend me your ears for some time okay everybody has put your pen down okay now make a real number line first of all okay so as you see on your screen i have made a gray color real number line okay on these on this real number line you mark the zeros of all these factors that you see in this rational function so what is the zero of this guy what is the zero of x minus 1 you understand the meaning of zeros right yeah zero is basically that number which makes the entire expression become a zero yeah what is the zero of x minus 1 1 correct so make a one on the number line let's say i put it over here what is the zero of x minus 3 3 okay so let's say one is here three is here what is the zero of x minus x plus 1 minus 1 okay so let me put it somewhere over here what is the zero of x to the power 6 zero okay so let me put it here what is the zero of x minus 2 whole cube x minus 2 whole cube pratik 2 yeah it's 2 so 2 will come somewhere over here right what is the zero of x plus 2 minus 2 correct so i'll put a minus 2 here fine so as you can see on this number line i have made the zeros of all these factors so now this number line because of these uh, you know numbers that you have put on it it has split the number line into intervals so you have one interval here one here one here one here one here one here one here so seven intervals have been created by these numbers okay all right so this step is clear to everybody make a number line plot the zeros of that uh, you know factor sitting in the, on that number line okay this step is clear okay next step is very very important 
Next step is I am now going to assign signs to these intervals. So what I am going to do, I am going to now assign signs to the intervals that have been created. Now signs of what? Signs of this expression. And you must be thinking, how do I do that? So let us take an interval. Let's take the rightmost interval. Okay. Always start with the rightmost interval. Okay. Take any number more than three. Take any number more than three. Give me, give me one such number more than three. Okay. Four. Most of you are taking four. Okay. Let's take, I take a number four. So if I put a four in this expression in place of X, the answer that comes out from there, what is the sign of that answer? So if I put a four in place of X, four minus one square positive. This is also positive, 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 positive. So what basically comes is the sign of this expression in this entire interval. Are you must be wondering, sir, you only took one value and then you generalized it for the whole interval. Yes, that is the beauty of it. Okay. So your entire function will be positive in this interval. Whether you take four, whether you take 4.5, whether you take hundred, whether you take 1 million, whether you take 1 billion, if you put in this expression, you will always get a positive answer. If you don't believe me, you can try for other values also. Okay. Any value more than three, if you take the sign of this expression, let's say I call this as Y, your Y will always be positive in this interval. Got it. Okay. Now, most of you would be thinking, sir, are you going to do the same for other six intervals? Yes, but not in the same way as what I did for the rightmost. Now I'm going to tell you a rule for assigning signs in the interval. We follow a rule. What is the rule? Start moving towards the left. Okay. Let's say if I start moving towards the left, the first number that I get is a three. Correct. Three comes from which factor? Three comes from this guy, isn't it? Correct. What is the parity of the power over here? Parity means is it even or odd? Odd. Correct. So rule is if you have odd power on the factor from which that number is coming, then switch the sign. So this plus will become minus in this interval. So you don't have to put any value between two and three to check what will be the sign. The sign will be negative. Okay. Now, obviously a question would be arising, sir. What if it was even, then what do you do? Then you retain the sign. Clear. So odd switch, even retain. So I hope everybody has put down their pens and listening to me properly, because if you make a error in understanding this, you will end up getting a lot of incorrect answers. Okay. So please listen to me very, very carefully writing and all. I'll give you the time to do it. Not to worry. In fact, we'll take many questions also. Okay. So three second care. What is the next number that you see? Two. Two comes from which power? Two, 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 two comes from this guy, right? So in this case, what is the parity of this? Even or odd? Odd. Odd means switch. So whatever you had here, that will switch and now it will become a plus. Got it? Clear? Okay. Keep moving to the left. Next number you see is a one. One comes from this guy. Correct? And this guy has got an even power. So even power means retain. So plus will remain a plus. Understood? Does it make sense? Does it make sense? Okay. Next number, zero. Zero comes from this particular factor. And in this particular factor, you have power as even. So you will still retain the sign. So this plus will remain plus. Understood? Okay. Now you tell me, what will be the sign coming here? Very good. 
minus sign excellent guys that means you are all listening to me very very carefully okay because this minus 1 comes from this factor and this factor has got 1 as its power so this is an odd number okay so odd means switching of sign will happen okay tell me for this now the last interval positive right because plus minus 2 has come from this factor and this has got odd power so this will be plus is it fine? So this is the most critical step because if you make a mistake over here, the entire problem will go for a toss. Now, what are we trying to solve here? We are trying to solve for which intervals or for what values of x is this entire expression on the left greater than or equal to 0. So greater than or equal to 0 means either it is positive or it is 0, right? So let us see in which intervals are we getting the sign as positive. So I'm getting the sign as positive in minus infinity to minus 2. I'm getting the sign positive in minus 1 to 0. I'm getting it in 0 to 1. I'm getting it in 1 to 2. And I'm getting it in 3 to infinity. Right? Yes or no? Yes or no? Okay. So now what I'm going to do is, I am going to take a union of these intervals, but this interval is not complete till we put the brackets. Okay, so let's put the brackets around it. Remember, minus infinity is always plus infinity is always around brackets. Okay, so never include infinity and minus infinity in your answer. Now, minus two, can I include minus two? You'll say, no, sir, don't even try to include minus two because if you include minus two as your x value, your entire expression will become undefined, isn't it? So there will be a round bracket here, right? Okay, so write a union here because you're going to take union of all these intervals. Similarly, minus one, can I include a minus one? You can say, yes, sir, you can include a minus one because at minus one, the expression will become zero and that is a part and parcel of the inequality. Right, so I can include minus one. Fine. Is it clear why did I include minus one? Why did I put a square bracket next to it? Because I'll explain this again. Because at minus one, your entire function will become a zero. And equal to zero is acceptable. No, I can have the answer as zero. Correct. What about zero? Should I put round brackets next to it or should I put square bracket next to it? Around, correct, Sadeep. Okay. Because if I put x as 0, things will become undefined on the left. Uh, sorry, on the rational function. So this will also be round bracket because both are 0 anyhow. And I have to put a union in between. What about one square bracket or round bracket? One. Can I include 1 in my answer? Yes, square bracket. Correct. So put a union here. 2, can I include it? 2, can I include it? No. So, what bracket should I put here? Round bracket again. Absolutely. Okay. 3, can I include? Yes. So, I'll put a square bracket. Okay. So, your answer for x, that means your inequality that I gave you here, the solution of this inequality will be this. Okay. So, this is basically the answer to this question. Now, the process is clear to everybody, right? Now, what is the reason for this process? That is something which I am going to explain you right now. Two factors have the same zero means you can club it, no? For example, if you had x minus 2 to the power 3 and there is another x minus 2 to the power of 4. So, club it, write it as x minus 2 to the power 7. Why would you write it separately? Okay. Now, I will explain you the reason behind this change of sign. Why do we change sign when the number that we are crossing is coming from a factor which has got odd power? And why do we retain the sign if the number that we are trying to cross has come from a factor which has got even power? Let's try to understand this. See, why did we change sign along 3? See, Let's say x minus 3 to the power 5, I write it separately. And other terms, I'm clubbing it up as some p of x. Okay. Now understand, if you are on the right side of 3, let's say 
three point zero 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 one, and if this was positive, right? Please note that whatever was the sign of this, that is not going to change, right? If you move to the left side of three, see, let's say if it was, let's say if it was a positive number, okay, and this was also a positive number, so this will remain positive even if you take x as two point nine 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 nine. But if this is positive and this be becomes negative, overall the sign will become negative, right? So this entire expression will become negative in this zone. So if you are crossing a number which is basically coming from a factor having odd power to the right and left of that number, there would be a change of the sign happening. But such a thing is not going to be seen if you have a factor subjected to even power. Let's say if I talk about x minus one. So let's say if I had x minus one square, let's say if it is positive right now, if you are at one point zero zero one, even if you are at point nine nine nine, this will still be positive because the power here is even. So when you're crossing that number, there will not be any change in the sign created because that particular factor was subjected to even power. Are you getting my point? Graphically speaking. The function will not change its sides. That means if it is above the x-axis, it will remain above the x-axis. When the power or the the number that uh, basically you are talking about or the zeros that you are basically talking about is subjected to an even power factor. Okay, and it is going to go to the other side. It is going to go to the negative side. If at all, it is going to cross a number which is coming from a factor subjected to odd power. Okay. See, it is not going to change because, they go. I'll just take a simple example. Let's say for a particular number, if I take an example of maybe let's say one. Okay. Now, if you take a one, this entire guy, this entire set of numbers here. Okay, they will not. Let's say I put a one. Okay. Or let's say a value which is slightly more than one. What will be the sign of this number? Let me let me write it again because I don't want to make that diagram more dirty. Okay, so the other numbers and the other terms I am writing in yellow. Yeah, see this. Okay. Let's say I call this expression, hold this whole of this as p of x. So I'm just calling it as p of x. Okay. Now, if let's say you have you have put a number one point zero one. Okay, this will be what positive. This will be positive, and what will be the sign of this whole p of x? Tell me. Uh, if I put one point zero one, this will be negative. This will be positive. This will be positive. This will be. Negative again. This will be positive. So overall, this will be positive, right? If I'm not mistaken. Okay. If I put x as point nine nine also, then see what will happen. This will still remain positive. This guy will still remain positive. And here, what will happen? This will again be negative. I'm just writing it here. This will again be positive. This will again be positive. This will again be negative. This will again be positive. So overall, this still remains positive. Correct. So if you see the net sign was positive here also, the net sign is positive here also. So there is no change in the sign when you are crossing that number one. So whatever was the sign here, the same sign happened over here. So this is what I have incorporated as a rule so that you don't waste your time when you are solving it. Now clear, Vasudev. Yeah, good question asked. Is it fine? Is this rule clear to everyone? Because I am now going to give you few questions. And then I'm going to give you a break. No, no, no. I'm going to give you one question at least. I know you all are hungry. You want to take a break. Just one question I'll give you. Okay. Solve the inequality. Uh, maybe I take a very simple question to begin with. Yes, yes, Vasudev. You can always take examples of a number in that interval and know the sign. But 
trust me this method which i told you is much faster than that but i'm leaving up to you to take a call So please note the left hand side is a polynomial, but nevertheless, polynomial is also a rational function. After this question, we may take a break, and uh, when I return from the other side of the break, we will probably take more exam more examples, and then start with our next type of rational functions. Okay, so much. Okay, Sadeep. So, Samarth answer is slightly different from Sadeep in terms of brackets. I hope all of you know the relevance of round brackets and square brackets. So, uh, request Sadeep to check uh, your brackets. Okay, Sanjana. Okay, now Sadeep has changed it. Okay, Pramod has completely different answer. Okay, Pramod. Risha also shows a completely different answer. Okay. Okay, Mahesh. Okay, Vasudev. Fine. So I think uh, let's discuss. We have already, you know, spent considerable amount of time on this. So first, make a number line and make the zeros of this particular factors on the number line. So I can see a minus two, I can see a one, and I can see a three. Okay. Now only for the right interval, only for the rightmost interval, we need to pick up a sample value. So pick up anything more than three. Anything more than three. Let's say I take a four. Okay, so four will make this positive. This anyways will be positive, and this will also be positive. Okay, now start moving to the left. So as I'm crossing, as I'm moving to the left, the first number I cross, or the first zero which I cross is x is three, and that zero comes from x minus three factor, which is subjected to odd power. So there will be a switch of sign, right? Next comes from x minus one. So x minus one is having again an odd power. So there will be again a switch of sign. And then minus two comes from x plus two, and which is subjected to even power, so there will be a retention of sign. Correct? No. Correct? No. Okay. So if I if I have to say which interval is it less than zero? Less than zero means negative. So I've only written negative in the interval one to three. There's no other interval where I've written a negative sign. And please note, since you cannot have this expression equal to zero, one cannot be included. And you also cannot include three because that will make it zero. So your answer to this question is open interval one to three. Okay. So I think Satdeep. Let me see who's the first one to get this right. Samarth Rao got this right. Well done, Samarth. So with this, we'll take a small break, and on the other side of the break, we will take few more problems on solving wavy curve sign scheme questions, and then we'll jump to the type three problems. So right now is three o five. Let's see each other at three twenty p.m. sharp. Thank you. Enjoy your break.
So let's take another question. Let's take so another. Could you show the previous slide? Previous slide you want me to go? Okay, sure. I'll go. I'll go to the previous slide. Yeah, tell me. All fine. Guys and girls, earnest request not to keep any doubts with respect to this concept because this is going to be a deciding factor in many of our subsequent concepts. Okay, so please make sure you are 110% sure about how, how this rule works. Okay. May I go to the question now? Yes, sir. Okay. Thanks a lot, Mahesh. So I have another question. So let's take this. X plus 4 to the power of 100. X minus 2 to the power of 1001. X plus 1 to the power of, let's say, 1. X minus 1 to the power of, let's say, 2. Whole divided by x to the power of 600, x plus 2 to the power of 501. This is less than equal to 0. Solve this in equation. Solve this in equation. This time, I don't want anybody to make any mistake. So read this question carefully. Let's not assume the powers. None. I thought the answer would be up by now. So I'm not solving it. Meanwhile, you are solving. I'm going to just make my zeros here zeros of these factors. So minus four, I can see, I can see a minus two. I can see a minus one. I can see a zero. I can see a one and I can see a two. Or maybe it's taking time for you to type it out. Okay. Now I understood why it is taking so much time to answer. Okay. Pramath. Okay. Samarth. Okay. So two people have answered so far. I'm, I'm waiting for others. Okay, Sanjana.
it's very long <laughs> you don't want to type it it's fine ishab it's it's fine absolutely fine i'm not forcing uh, anybody to type out an answer which you feel is too too lengthy to type okay it's fine Oh my God! Again, you read the question. No, this time Vasudev. Okay, let's discuss this out. so if i take the rightmost interval again take any dummy value maybe more than 2 let's say 3 everything is going to be positive right now here many people ask me this question sir uh, by default is it positive always i would say no okay so don't take chances uh there are certain situations when you realize that the rightmost interval can also become negative so this is not a rule that you should be making for yourself better to invest that 15 20 second of your time to figure out whether it should be positive or negative because everything is linked to that so that is our pointer right so our change of sign or our retention of sign is keeping this rightmost interval sign into our mind right so if that becomes wrong my dear your answer will become ulta of whatever whatever it was supposed to be okay so please be very very careful so it let's not make a rule that it is always positive Okay, hardly takes ten ten seconds to figure out whether it should be positive or not. Okay, now let's start moving to the left. So the first number that we see is two. Two is coming from x minus two, which has got an odd power. Odd means odd means switch. So plus will become minus. Yes or no? Yes or no? Next one. One has come from x minus one. right x minus 1 has got even power so there will be a retention of sign so minus will remain minus correct then zero zero comes from x to the past 600 600 is even power even means again retention so minus will remain minus correct minus 1 comes from x plus 1 x plus 1 has got odd power so if nothing is there means power is one so in that case there will be a switching of sign okay next minus 2 minus 2 has come from x plus 2 which has got again an odd power odd power means again switching of sign correct then minus 4 minus 4 comes from x plus 4 and has got even power that means again a retention of sign so please check this should have been the sign that you should have got this should have got okay all right so let's now write down those intervals where my function is either negative so this means either negative or zero okay so let's write down the interval so it's minus infinity to minus 4 minus 4 to minus 2 minus 1 to 0 0 to 1 1 to 2 okay now let's write down the brackets round brackets minus 4 minus 4 comes from a factor on the top so this is included okay so union minus 4 included minus 2 minus 2 comes from factor in the denominator so this cannot be included similarly minus 1 comes from a factor on the top which is included zero comes from a factor on the bottom so which cannot be included again one comes from a factor on the top which is included two comes from a factor in the top which is again included is that fine any questions any concerns with this so far okay now please note that you should have actually included minus 4 2 minus 1 and 1 in your interval so is minus 4 included yes minus 1 included yes 1 included yes 2 included yes so that's all you need to write so this becomes your answer to the question now many people try to collapse these intervals collapse means try to make them one like you can also do 
a single you know in a single statement you can write minus infinity to minus 2 directly you don't have to write you don't have to split it unnecessarily at minus 4 okay yes or no similarly similarly you can collate this interval so you can directly go from 0 to 2 also without breaking it up at 1 so instead of writing such a long answer you can cut short your answer in this way also getting my point now many people say can i also write the answer like this minus infinity to minus 2 union minus 1 to 2 directly and they will just exclude a zero from here because zero is coming in between so even this is acceptable so all of these are acceptable answers to the same question is it fine any questions any concerns okay good so with this i think we have uh, we are now heading towards the third type of question so type 3 okay so here i will take a question where there is a rational function which has got a linear or a constant on the numerator and has got a quadratic in the denominator okay so it has got a linear polynomial or a constant polynomial on the numerator and has got a quadratic polynomial in the denominator okay Let's take one such simple example, which is actually picked up from your uh, NCRT textbook, this expression. Okay, so I've taken a constant and I've taken a quadratic. Question is, let's find out its domain and range. Now, would you like to try it first or should I explain you how to do it? Tell me, would you like to try it out? You want to try it out. Okay, go ahead. Try it out. I'm giving you, I'm giving you time to try it out. Very good, Sadeep. Domain is simplest. Domain, I don't think so. Domain is bothering anybody over here. But what people are bothered is by the range. Correct, uh, Sanjana. Sanjana and Sadeep, so far, both of you are right in your domain at least. Uh, Vikram, first try it out. Okay. First put in your efforts, then we'll explain you the, then I'll explain the solution for this. Uh, Pratik, are you sure you are covering every, everything or are you missing out on something? Okay, very good. I'm getting uh, answers for the domain for most of you. I'm still waiting for range. Okay. Anybody who is coming with the range answer? Nobody. Okay. Uh, Laksh, that's your range or that's your domain? Range. Okay. Fine. 
let's discuss it out my dear domain is plain and simple domain is going to be the same formula that we have been using since our you know the beginning of our rational functions r minus those values of x which will make the denominator become a zero okay first of all this becoming zero means x square is one that means x is plus minus one so your r minus one and minus one so this will become your domain of the given function right nobody has any issue with the domain <laughs> pratik okay is it fine okay now what about range range the idea is more or less the same we will call this as y okay and we'll try to make x the subject of the formula how do i do that let's check so first of all cross multiply uh, means multiply the denominator to the left side so this will give you x square y is y minus 1 so x square is y minus 1 by y okay now please note you don't have to exactly make x the subject of the formula even x square will suffice for me now listen to this very very carefully my dear very very important if your x belongs to all real numbers except 1 and minus 1 then what can you say about x square in which interval will it belong I write it on the chat box set of all real numbers no 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 all positive all positives no the square of a number which doesn't include 1 and minus 1 can be in what interval are baba simple 0 to infinity except 1 no <laughs> why 0 to infinity because you are squaring a real number if you are squaring a real number your answer should be greater than or equal to 0 but you can't be having a one because your x is not one or minus one whose square happens to be one right so you can't get one from your squaring right pati okay now what does it mean it means it means your y minus 1 by y is greater than or equal to 0 and cannot be one this guy cannot be one but this is always true because this anyways cannot be one true always right because if you put this equal to one what will happen sec let's check if you put this equal to one you will end up getting a shock of your life so this will anyways not be one but this should at least be positive correct now and here i can use my wavy curve because this is a rational function on the left it's just that the function is now in terms of y and the examples which i was taking was in terms of x so name of the variable doesn't change the concept so if you make the zeros these are the zeros zeros of this guy is 1 zero of this guy is 0 correct put the signs so for putting the sign i will put the sign of the rightmost interval first so for that i am choosing some you know test value as 2 so 2 makes it positive and since all of them have odd powers you can start switching the sign minus and this will become plus okay now since you want it to be greater than or equal to 0 you have to always choose positive correct so your answer will be minus infinity to 0 union 1 to infinity now mind you 0 cannot be included but 1 can be included so this becomes your range of the function so this is your answer for the range and i don't think so anybody got this right i don't think so anybody got this ha huh, but why you want to take cases when when there is a wavy curve why to take cases wavy curve is like you know making my life easy let me use it is it fine any questions any questions with this approach so please note the process of finding the range is not as easy as finding the domain so you need to practice more range based questions in fact both domain and range based questions 
anything that you would like me to revisit here or explain once again kindly message me or speak out i'll be more than happy to help you out again sir the inequality yes. plus solution you can understand are this inequality how is one by y is good yes uh, from there from there yeah see your x x square expression is this right and since your x belongs to real numbers except 1 and minus 1 your x square will belong to this interval is this agreed upon by you yes sir yes sir so x square is what x square is this guy only so this guy should be greater than equal to 0 this is what greater than equal to 0 and at the same time it should not be 1 correct yes sir yes sir no? and y can never be 1 Uh, in this case this expression can never be one because if if you equate it to one you will end up getting that something like this is happening okay so this will always be true another way of looking at it is another way of looking at it is this will never be one for all real numbers correct yes or no yes sir i got it. yes sir and, no i was asking like after that or the uh, this, thing, this will graph something yes yes and let, let me complete and this will be positive only for this interval so let me not write range here let me write like this okay now and means and means you have to take the overlap of these two situations so what i'm going to do is i'm showing another perspective of it slightly you know more i can say detailed one so you are taking an intersection of these two intervals so this interval says this interval says i have to be on the left of 0 or more than 1 and this interval says i can be any real number what is the overlap of the two where do you think the two over lines are overlapping here and here correct so overlap of these two will ultimately lead to your range which is the same as what you wrote here so this becomes your range of the function is it fine Yes, sir. Got it. Okay, so, sir. I did without taking the x square and all. Ah, see, whatever approach you take. So, what? How did you do it without taking x square? Uh, I didn't take x square. So, root of y minus one by y. Then the same thing. We we cut, but I took lesser than equal to, and I solved. Why? Sir, if you take lesser than equal to, then you get like the values for which it's negative. Then you can just do real numbers minus that. Then you get the same answer. One second, one second, one second. You you wrote x square as y minus one by y. Then what did you do next? Root. A root. So it will be plus minus this. Hmm. Ab bolo next bolo. Then uh, for y minus one by y, we equal. For y minus one by y, yes. Yeah, because less than equal to zero. Less than equal to zero. Absolutely wrong. So no, we can do that. Then in the last, you get the values, which is. So I got no, the same answer. No sir, no sir. This quantity can never be negative. Else your x will become non-real. Exactly. That's why you exclude those values. In the end will exclude r minus real numbers minus. Acha. So say that no, you excluded those values. Okay. Then how did you ensure that it is not equal to? It is not equal to one or minus one. So that I didn't do. Correct. This is the thing. Watch what people are doing nowadays. They are just you know uh, without the domain into consideration. They are trying to solve the problem. And this is a simple problem. You may get the right answer in that way also. But when it becomes question becomes complicated and you are not following an exhaustive process. there are chances that your domain you will miss out something range you will miss out something okay so sir, i guess when you do in that method you can't check it sorry when you like take lesser and solve i don't think you can check if you take lesser than and do it then you don't think so we can check it like put it equal to and see the idea is this expression that you're talking about under root of plus minus under root of y minus 1 by y this should be all real numbers except 1 and minus 1 correct now if you have to make it all real numbers this entire expression will boil down to you ensuring two things number one this guy should be greater than equal to 0 which anyways has been addressed over here correct and at the same time y minus y should not be 1 because uh, when only this is 
under root of plus minus 1 will become plus minus 1 so ultimately you have boiled down to the same equation mahesh what the point yes sir yes sir okay so that approach provided it is taken in this way will also lead to the same answer let's take another question let's take another question find domain and range for x by 1 plus x square try this out Okay, domain everybody is getting right. Absolutely. Range is the one which is more important. Range is uh, all real numbers. Okay. So no, not range. The first one was domain, and after and is range. Uh, no, no, not for you, Mahesh. You have you have perfectly answered it. Uh, I am talking from Vasudev's answer. Okay, should we discuss it out or should we wait for more time? Okay, Gautam. Wait, wait. Okay, fine. I'm waiting. See, you solving the question gives me more pleasure, right? Because ultimately, you are learning here.
you can find lot of these questions in rd sharma uh, mcq part so last uh, last uh, you can say few pages of the chapter you'll see they have given some mcqs so maybe i would uh, like you to suggest trying those questions also all right so let's discuss it because we don't have much time so here the domain will be all real numbers of course excluding such axes for which this will become zero right but trust me this is not going to become zero ever for any real number so this will be a null set so it's like real number minus null set so that's equal to a null set okay next what will be the range for range first of all i am going to take this as a y and now now i am going to make x the subject of the formula so while doing that you would realize that you will end up getting a quadratic in x so here making x the subject of the formula is not as simple as what it was in the previous few questions okay here x is coming like a quadratic right and this y is acting like the a of the quadratic then minus 1 is acting like a b and y is acting like a c right so we will use we will use the quadratic equation formula that is minus b plus minus b square minus 4ac okay by 2a by 2a as your x value correct yes or no so far so good anybody have anybody has any issue till this step anyone has any issue till this step okay now let us recall let us recall that we are dealing with real numbers so this quantity that is 1 plus minus under root of 1 minus 4y square by 2y should be real numbers isn't it because your x is real isn't it because your x is real numbers right so this should be real so when it is real what are the two things that you can comment looking at the fact that this should be real one thing for sure you can comment is that this term 1 minus 4y square which is subjected to under roots that should be greater than equal to 0 because please note that we can never have a negative quantity subjected to an under root sign okay so that quantity 1 minus 4y square should be greater than equal to 0 everybody agrees with me on that everybody is fine with me on that okay and second thing that possibly people will say is that y should not be zero okay but let me tell you this is subject to verification so we will verify it okay so these are the two things that come in your mind when you are trying to say that this quantity should be real in nature isn't it so far so good so these two conditions one and two must together be satisfied isn't it any other restriction that you want to put on y other than these two no restriction okay cool now let's check it out so if you take this fellow 1 minus 4y square greater than equal to 0 so i am now factorizing it like this right can i apply my wavy curve on this can i apply my wavy curve on this yes sir no sir i don't think so why not They, these are these are factors the factors here are having zeros as half and minus half why can't we apply wavy curve sir sorry sir i got a little confused okay we can right now let us assign the signs to these intervals what sign will come in the rightmost interval tell me plus or minus plus or minus plus or minus write down on the chat box take any number more than half let's say take a 1 and put 1 everywhere in place of y what do you get negative sign right and since all these factors are having odd powers there will be a switching of sign like this correct everybody is happy with the sign scheme okay now greater than equal to 0 means positive or zero so positive or zero will only be in this interval minus half to half and since it is allowed to take zero you will have a close interval 
So from the first answer, you end up getting this. So this is our result of the first one. Okay. Now, second one, and I can see Rishabh also saying that y cannot be zero. Now, please note that when you are saying y is equal to x plus one by x square, if x is zero, y can be zero, no? Rishabh, just because y came in the denominator here, I understood your concern that you're saying y should not be zero, but look at the original expression. When x is zero, y can be zero. No, this is your y. Sir, but then the problem is that the first expression contradicts the second expression. So you don't know which one is correct. Which, which contradicts the first expression? So the first expression says that y can be zero. Second, this, uh, uh, when you express uh, yeah. the equation in terms of like y, then you'll that's, get that's right. Zero. No, so, even this, the, even this doesn't contradict to Asudev. If you put y as zero, you'll end up getting an indeterminate form, which is zero by zero. This is considered to be an indeterminate form in mathematics. Okay. Sir, what's the difference between this and uh, undefined? Uh -huh. Not I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Sometimes what happens when the quantities in the numerator and denominator both are zero, zero each, your answers can be a finite value. Those are called indeterminate quantities. But there are many situations where if you have something divided by zero, you don't get a defined answer. That is an undefined quantity, right? So in such cases, you have to take a call on the basis whether can my original equation can I get a zero from this by choosing any real X? The answer to that is yes. So this condition is actually an indeterminate form. It is not an undefined expression like how it used to happen in the previous cases. So if your numerator becomes a zero, then there is a chance that your expression may become indeterminate. Indeterminate means it can take a finite value, means it need not be undefined expression. We will talk more about it in the limits chapter. So yes, here sir. the verdict is this, this is ruled out, right? So your answer to the range just becomes minus half to half. Getting my point. You don't have to exclude a zero here, Rishabh. Sir, what about the second case in that? What second case? Sir, so there are two cases uh, of 1 minus 2y and 1 plus 2y greater than or equal to 0. Either both are greater than or equal to 0 or both are less Aray, than. Sir, Vasudev, you didn't get the entire agenda. I am taking care of everything simultaneously. Why are, you taking, why are you taking cases? You want to do it by cases, your problem will take three, five, uh, three to four minutes more. What is the whole point of learning wavy curve? You yes. don't have to take cases, no, both are positive or both are negative. That all you need not do. You may have learned that in school, but when it comes to solving an equality using your wavy curve, every condition is taken accounted for here. Yes, sir, got it. Wavy curve, why did we learn at all wavy curve? So that we don't have to make those cases. Agar mujhe case leke solve karna tha, why would I do all this wavy curve uh, you know, uh, discussion at all? I would have done that only, no? Okay, yeah, so wavy curve circumvents that longer path and gets to the answer faster. Got yeah. the point? Got, got, sir. Sad. <laughs> it's okay. I mean, what making a mistake doesn't should not make you sad. It should make you happy. Oh, I learned this. I was make, always making a mistake in this kind of question. Sir, I have a doubt, sir. I tried to do it in a different method. Yes, tell me your method. I will justify your method also. Tell me. Sir, I didn't get the same answer. I want to know what I did wrong in it. Hmm, tell me. Sir, so x divided by 1 plus x square. So the denominator is always positive for any real number. x divided by 1 plus x square. Ah. Sir, denominator is al always positive. Always positive, yes. Sir, numerator could be positive or negative. Right. Sir, so this whole expression could be negative, zero or positive. In case the numerator is zero, then it will be zero. Mm -hmm. So it sir, means everything it can take. Yes, sir. Set of all real numbers. No, who tell you? Who told you? Just because they are positive and negative, it means it covers the entire real number line. Why? Right? Look at the ratio. See, if I write, if I write one quantity by another quantity, right? 
and this can take the same value you're putting over here and this this q is never allowing p to be more than it that means this guy is always more then this quantity will always be less than one no did you account for that oh no sir i didn't account for that no, so it is not as simple as saying that above one is positive below one is negative and hence the ratio will be everything no okay got it sir got it uh, that's the difference between school teacher and this session right <laughs> okay now excluding zero is sometimes present in the options also and many people wrongly mark that option as well okay so please be careful please be careful don't do those mistakes okay let's take another question this time in, in fact another type i will take this time i'll take a type where you have a quadratic by quadratic in fact this is the last type that we are going to you know take up quadratic polynomial by another quadratic polynomial see in your school you should have asked your teacher no ki why are you excluding zero right why are you excluding zero just because you had a zero in the denominator but your expression will take zero when x is zero these are the questions that you should be asking i don't expect things to be straight away okay ma'am is saying so sir is saying so so it should be correct then that is not how science and mathematics is is you know studied you have to ask right set, set right set of questions okay okay so here also i'll take one simple example let's say i take this function x square minus x plus 1 upon x square plus x plus 1 in fact i will show you the graph as well a uh, graph is a very good way to learn the domain and the range so you, our previous function was this right y equal to x divided by x square plus 1 right right now if you see from the graph domain is everything because it goes all the way in both directions and range is between half to half so 0.5 is the top edge and minus 0.5 is the bottom okay so this is your this is your range of the graph okay and zero is very much taken see the graph is passing through origin right okay anyways let's take this question we have to find the domain and range for this particular function Sir, yes, sir. I don't think it's uh, the denominator is not rational, sir. You will get x is equal to minus one plus or minus minus two three. So, so but with sir, it's a similar question like this in center module. That's fine, but what is the question? Uh, so my question was like I was solving the center model. There was this something called exp in the exercise of domain and range. What is exp? Exp means e to the power exponential. Okay, power. Okay, okay. Uh, who had this concern that you know the x here is what? What do you mean by solving for x? And why are you solving? But, yeah, but you'll have to find if it uh, it should not be equal to zero, right? So. Ah, so if it is not equal to zero, say everything is accepted. What is that? What is wrong in that? Oh yeah, sir. Okay. Correct. Okay. So, um, Pramath has given one response. Very good, Pramath. See, I'm more interested in knowing the range. That is what is you know the. the difficult of the two actually domain i don't think so any issue i'll i'll write it down for the domain so domain is going to be all real numbers except those values of x for which this guy will become a zero right but you know that this fellow can never be zero why 
This will never happen. That means it's a null set. Why it will never happen? It is because it is because x square plus x x square plus x plus one. If you complete the square, it will look like this. Okay. So this quantity will always be more than three by four. So this can never be a zero. Right? Because it is always greater than or equal to three by four. So this will not give you any answer. So you don't exclude anything from real numbers, and hence your domain is all real numbers. So getting domain is not at all difficult. It's super super easy. Range is what I am interested in. Okay, so Vasudev has given one answer for range. Okay, we'll see Vasudev. Anybody else? Okay, Mahesh. Mahesh has got completely different answer than Vasudev. Okay. Should we uh, move on with the discussion for range? Okay. So, oh, you want some time? Fine, fine. I'll I'll wait. I'll wait. I'll wait. See, if you solve it, I'm more than happy. Okay, Vasudev, you want to change your answer? Fine, acknowledged. Shall we now? Okay. Uh, the first thing that I would do here is uh, again try to write x in terms of y, right? So for that, I'll just uh, take the denominator to the left side. This is what I'll end up getting. Okay. Let's uh, bring things to one side. Okay. So I happily see a quadratic sitting over here. Okay, very good, Samath. Pramat, very good. Okay, so what you see here is a quadratic in X, right? So what we see is a quadratic in X. So let's use our uh, Sridhar Acharya formula to solve this question. So uh, when we use Sridhar, Sridhar Acharya formula, you get minus B. Minus B will be a negative of Y plus 1 because B is your Y plus 1 plus minus b square minus 4ac minus 4ac okay divided by 2a is this fine rishav very good rishav okay now if you want this to be real i'm writing it as big <laughs> If you want it to be real, what are the things that you need to keep into your mind? So the first thing you'll say, sir, I don't want this under root thingy to become, uh, to be a negative number because then under root of a negative number will give me non-real answers, right? So the first thing that we need to acknowledge and keep in our mind is that this guy should be greater than or equal to zero. Of course, I will simplify it a little later on, but as of now, I'm just uh, pinning down the possibilities for this quantity to become a real. Second thing, which you possibly will say that Y should not be one because you know, this guy should not be zero. But again, this is subject to subject to verification, right? We'll verify it a little later on. Okay. Now let's start with the first one. Let's start with the first one. 
so the first guy says this fellow acha this i can write it as something like this minus twice y minus 1 the whole square right why i'm writing like this because i can use x square minus y square formula or a square minus y b square formula so it'll be a plus b into a minus b correct please uh, highlight if i have missed out anything so this will be 3y minus 1 and this is going to be uh, if i am not mistaken 3 minus y correct so again it's a rational function in equality so may i call upon wavy curve to help me for this right so wherever there is a rational function in equality think no further than using your wavy curve right so wavy curve is one shot solution you don't have to make cases unnecessarily you may have learned how to you know solve this by making cases but that is going to take double the time to do the same work okay you may be you, you may like to use that in your school exams but wavy curve is single shot one shot one stop solution for all these rational function inequalities provided the structure is the same as what we had discussed while discussing the concept so here what will be the zeros 1/3 and 3 okay okay now take the value which is more than 3 let's say i take a 4 everything will be a negative so this will be negative now see this is one occasion where you started with negative on the rightmost so never never take it positive by default and since all these factors are coming from odd power there will be a switching of sign correct yes or no so greater than equal to 0 the interval that you are getting is 1 by 3 to 3 and since it is greater than equal equal is there you can include both of them correct now the second possibility says y should not be 1 and i have to be careful about it because one comes somewhere in between so should i actually remove one or should i not remove one that is something which my question itself will tell me so i don't I, yes vasudev Sir, I don't think you should remove one. Okay, let's see why. So, if you equate it to one, do I get a rat? Do I get a real x for this? You will say yes. If you just equate it, you will end up getting x value as zero. So, if I put x as zero, I will get y as one. So, there is no reason for you to remove y equal to one. Okay. So, this itself, this will be ruled out. You will not pay attention to this. Okay, because it has failed the verification. So the only answer that you are going to acknowledge is this fellow. So this becomes your range of the function. Is it fine? Any questions? Any concerns? Sir, I had a doubt. Yes, sir. Tell me, sir. Sir, uh, I think you might be able to do this without uh, getting, um, without changing the equation in terms of the y and uh, solving the quadratic equation. Okay, tell me the process. Sir, I think you might be able to do it directly from here. You might be able to judge like that x square minus x plus one divided by x square plus x plus one is always lesser than one or something like that. I'm I've been trying to do that, but I'm not getting the correct answer. Could you please show how to do it from no, that? That is not the way to do it. <laughs> Because that is not the way to do it. How can you say that this is always lesser than this? There is no such. Uh, there is no such. Uh, you know, x is a variable, right? X could be any real number. So how do you say that this quantity is always going to be more than this quantity just because there is a minus sitting over there? Because we have got our range to be three also, right? That means this guy can be three times this also. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got it. So there is no such. There is no such way to say by looking at the expression. See, we are not astrologers over here. we are mathematicians at least we are acting like mathematicians so we have to be logical in the way we are writing steps yes sir got it uh can't we sir we can't use wavy curve in school exam why not is there any instruction given by the school teachers that you can't use wavy curve i mean mahesh is saying so is it true sir they only used wavy curve sir oh so why not sir no sir i was asking there was a question mark i was asking if we can use Uh, I mean, see, the best person to answer this is your school teachers themselves, right? But if she is already using it or he is already using it, then you can you can use it. Why not? 
right nobody is stopping you okay let's take another question x square minus 1 by x square plus 1 for this function find the domain of the function and the range of the function yeah domain is very easy and no and everybody will get the domain absolutely right Gautam correct, Samarth correct. Domain wise, everybody is fine. No issues with domain. Range is where the story gets stuck. But I'm sure now that you know the process, nobody should be you know, getting stuck now. Okay, Vasudev, very good. So Vasudev has come with Vasudev Pramat, very good, excellent. Very good. Come on. Uh, my my very good doesn't mean right. Okay, I keep saying very good because I like people answering. <laughs> Whether they are right or wrong, that is immaterial to me. I always see the efforts. Okay, just put in effort, put in the right effort. Things will start getting right in some time. Okay. But I want people to participate. I can see many of you are not participating. First of all, I don't know for some reason the attendance is fluctuating between 20 and 21. 20 and 21. There's one person who is continuously leaving and joining back and again, back and forth. I don't know who is that person. Maybe I'll come to know from the Zoom report. Anybody who's getting constantly disconnected? I'll give one more minute for people who are trying hard for range. Please wrap this up in one more minute. Uh, next class, I will uh, wind up this chapter because I think we, we need to now start with trigonometry. That's a long pending concept. So through this chapter, I have already tried to cover functions, sets, relations, functions, and inequalities. So all your needs for set relation functions and inequalities, that means four chapters have already been taken into consideration under this single chapter. Okay. Uh, next class, that is the last, that should be the last class for us on functions. I will be covering up irrational functions. I'll be covering up uh, exponential, logarithmic, and special functions. So these four types of functions will be taken up in the next session. Okay. Oh my God. Sadeep has a different answer. Sanjana has a different one. Rishabh has a different one. Oh my God. This is something which I don't like. People giving different, different answers for the same thing. Okay. Anyways, let's check. So first of all, domain, what's the domain? So domain will be all real numbers, except those X for which the denominator would become a zero. But you know for sure that there is no real x for which x square plus 1 will become a 0. So you'll end up getting excluding nothing from r. 
So your answer is actually R. Okay. Correct. Now, what about the range? Let's talk about it. So for range, what I'm going to do is the same approach. I'm going to write X in terms of Y, X in terms of Y. So when I cross multiply, when I take the denominator to the other side, this is what I'm going to see. Okay. So Y plus one is equal to X square minus X square Y. So you end up getting X square one minus Y. Okay. So X square will be equal to Y plus one by one minus Y. Is it fine? So far, so good. Any issues with this uh, making X square the subject of the formula? <clears throat> is it fine? Now you can do it without making a quadratic also because clearly you can get directly your X square. Now see, since X belongs to, since X belongs to real numbers, can I say X square will belong to complete it? If X belongs to real number, X square will belong to the real numbers minus those which are not perfect squares. What are you saying? Zero to infinity, right? Sir, because then if X is like real number, then X square will be one, four, nine like that. Oh, for you, natural numbers are only real numbers. Oh, sorry, sorry. I forgot about the other ones. Hey, Baba, Asadev. Didn't sleep properly last night. Huh? <laughs> okay, anyways. So, coming back. So, since x square is this guy, can I say y plus 1 by 1 minus y is greater than equal to 0. Now, the moment I see this, what comes in my mind? Wavy curve because it's a rational function inequality. Correct? Yes or no? Let's put the signs. So what will be the sign in the rightmost interval? Positive or negative? Sir, I guess it's minus. And you guess it, I guess is absolutely right. Okay. So if you put a two here, everything will become negative, right? So three by negative one is a negative number. And now all these factors have odd powers. So it's keep switching from one sign to the other, right? Now you're trying to solve when it is greater than or equal to zero. Greater than or equal to zero means either zero or positive. So minus one to one. Now please note, minus one can be included, but one cannot be included. Are you getting this point? Right? So your Y will be in this interval which means your range of the function is going to be this. So this is your answer to this question. Is it fine? Any questions? Any questions? Any concerns? Sir, is 1 by 2 odd or even? 1 by 2? So because like I took the root ended, so if I have to apply that, uh, if 1 is a number is odd, power is odd, so I have the root minus half, half there. 1 by 2 is odd or even means I didn't get your question. So, uh, sir, you took x square with x square and even. I took x is equal to root of mm -hmm. the thing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for me, it would be y, y plus 1 to the power half. Okay, you wrote it something like this. Then go ahead. What did you do then? So, y plus 1 to the power half. And 1 by 1 minus y to the power half. Acha, one more important thing. Is this the same as, let's say I, I, I write it like this, under root AB. Is it same as saying under root A by under root B? I guess that's what. Okay, please note, in this case, the only restriction that you have is A by B should be positive. Correct? Or non-negative, so as to say. But here you have a restriction that even A should be this and even your B should be this. Right. So is there any difference between this and this here? The ratio is positive or here. The ratio is non-negative, but here the individually, they should be positive or at least a should be non-negative. Right. 
So when you write it as under root of y plus one by under root of y minus one, you have already put extra restrictions on y, which okay. is going to be not good for your problem solving. You are going to miss out on a lot of values of y. Oh yes, okay, sir. That's a mistake which many people do actually. Hence, I thought I would discuss it with you. Now, yes, Samarth is asking why it is not under the under the yeah. So the verification step is already taken care of, right? See, if you would, if you want to write it as a quadratic, let's say here itself, I would write it like it as a quadratic. So x square one minus y minus y plus one equal to zero. So when you solve it as a quadratic, x will be minus b, which is zero, plus minus under root of b square minus four ac. So minus four ac will be four y minus one and sorry one minus y and y plus one. By two a, correct. So there are two things that you need to ensure. One is this guy should be this guy should be greater than or equal to zero, and second step is y should not be one. Okay. So you are basically trying to approach from this angle, right? So here you have to verify this part. That is what you are trying to say, correct? Summer. Okay. Now this is as good as a wavy curve. So minus one one. Please note the sign here. This will be plus. Sorry, this will be minus plus minus. So you end up getting y value as minus one to one closed. Correct? No. Yes, sir. That's what I thought. Ah, huh. now see, here y genuinely cannot be one. This is also true. The reason being, if I put y as one, see what will happen. I'm putting one as y. So if you do this, sorry, the sign was minus on top, right? Yeah, you will end up getting something like this: x square minus one is equal to x square plus one, which means you're trying to say minus one is equal to one. So this is oh. this is then genuinely to to, uh, to be taken okay. into consideration. Your y will not be one because if y is one, this non-mathematical result will come out, which is definitely not acceptable. So hence, this one which you had included here has to be excluded finally. So my method automatically takes that into consideration. So if you take this approach, that is your second approach, even that will give you the same result. Is that fine, Samarth? Makes sense. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, dear all, we, I'll stop over here because uh, the next concept that we are going to start with is your rational function. I don't think so. We have, you know, any time left? Hardly one minute will be left. So, next class, I'll just tell you the agenda. Next class, I should be able to finish off number one, domain and range of irrational function. Domain and range of irrational function. This is very very important. We'll talk about domain and range of uh, exponential and logarithmic function. Exponential and logarithmic function. Okay, I will not be talking about domain range of trigonometric function because, anyways, that's a agenda that I would be taking up under trigonometry. And third, we will take up modulus function. Let me write like this: mod function. One one example. I will not go into details of it. One one example of mod, GIF, LIF. Okay, fractional part. Okay, max min, signum. Okay, so one one example we'll take up on these this concept. Okay, so I think next class will be uh, second Saturday, right? Second Saturday is offline, na? Right? Yeah, sir. Okay, so we'll take this in the class itself. Yes, yes. In the monthly test, till ever, we, we, uh, till ever, we, wherever we complete, that will be included in the monthly test. Okay, is it fine?